Hey, what's up guys? Sean back with another video, and I found another Truly video that looked pretty interesting to me. I nearly died at 600 pounds, now I'm half the size, and I'm coming up on half the size, so I'm about to the same point this guy is in his journey, but I just know that our experience are going to mirror each other so much in so many ways, because... It's almost scary just how alike your experiences can be with someone you've never met. But I feel like I can sympathize and just kind of, you know, see the humanity in it with somebody who gets up to that size. Because a lot of people just don't get it. They're like, how'd you let that happen to yourself? Well, I tell you what, you can't really say it sneaks up on you, but it almost does. You get to the point where you're like, oh, wow. I don't know my friggin' weight, my scale goes here, oh, screw it, ignorance is bliss. And that's kind of just how a lot of people rock out at first. And then before you know it, you're 600 pounds, you're barely getting around your own house, holding onto the wall, it's a sad existence, you're rocking a neck beard, which I still rock because I can't grow a good beard, kind of sucks, but man, me and this guy, I guarantee you're going to have a lot in common. So this video should be really interesting, but let's get it started because I'm rambling. At my heaviest, I weighed 600 pounds. I would eat from the very moment I woke up in the morning uh, to the minute I guy. went to bed. I was consuming over 10,000 calories a day. It definitely impacted my marriage. It really messed a lot of things up. Holy shit, this guy looks great. Man, and I would kill a pack of Oreos like nobody's business. Nutter Butters, I was all about those. Uh, give me any kind of Cheeto. I was killing them. Starburst, gummy worms. That was my life. And only soda. I don't think I drank water for like 15 years. And at 600 pounds, numerous hospital trips and infections, I had to do something right away. I lost 300 pounds in just over a year and a half. Wow. I went from a 78 inch waist to a 38 inch waist. I can fit into a size 38 right now, but I'm taking it I'm taller than this guy, and my loose skin has gotten nowhere near where this guy's is yet. I have like a tiny bit, but not nearly that bad. Mentally now, I'm a lot more focused on my goals, focused on my future, and focused on my life. My goal weight is 250 pounds. I'm still not finished. That's where I'm trying to go. Growing up, I was always the chubby kid, the fat kid, picked blast in gym class. Never pick last, always athlete, even as a fat boy, I still kind of could compete. And people would tell me that all the time. Like, you're scary athletic for as big as you are. If you actually, like, buckled down, you could be a freak out here. Bullied, picked on, but it was rough. It's not what any kid should go through. When I was a child, I had a relationship with food where I used it as comfort. I would uh, always sneak food or overeat food if I was upset. Food never let me down. That didn't happen to me, but I could eat whatever I wanted whenever I wanted. Nobody said anything to me. At one point as a teenager, my mother put a lock on the freezer and I found the key within 12 hours, I think. And I was in that sucker cooking me some chicken nuggies that night. And she used to get so mad that I cooked her like lunch food for the kids she babysat. She used to want to kill me. <laughs> I realize now that I've been an emotional eater my whole life. It just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I wasn't dealing with my mental health at all. So it just ballooned and then it skyrocketed. Generally, after supper, this would have been my typical night snack. Chips, chocolate bar, big glass of Coke. Probably come back for some of these. I only drank Coke and I would eat like trash like that too. But I would always try to get some ice cream or cheesecake, man. I freaking love cheesecake. I haven't had cheesecake in years, but still kind of get a little riled up thinking about it. <laughs> when I was starting to get to around my heaviest weight, I wasn't working. I was very depressed. It definitely impacted wow. my marriage. I was always moody because of my size and my mental health state. It was a struggle. He wasn't able to work. His Holy shit, she lost a lot of weight too. I was gonna say it looks like she probably needs to lose a few pounds too, but I guess they both got on this journey together, which is awesome because some people need a support system. Me personally, I was just like, I wanna do it to prove everybody wrong that always said, hey, there's Sean, he's a fat piece of whatever. Mental health wasn't the greatest, it was just, it was a struggle. One morning I woke up, I didn't get out of bed. I probably hadn't showered for a week. I was just depressed. I just I just lied there on a mattress on the ground. 
because I had broken my bits numerous Same. times. That was probably my lowest moment. It's hard to watch someone you love go through that. I yeah, I mean, I had a mattress on the ground because I broke it, but I didn't break it alone. There was two of us in the bed when it broke, <laughs> if that tells you anything. But um, yeah, I definitely broke it, had a bed on the floor. And yeah, I, I, there were days where I didn't even get up to shower because I just didn't feel like doing anything at all. It's a combination of hurting, pain, just being super disgusted with yourself. Like, I guarantee I had a bunch of mental stuff going on. But I never went to see anybody for it. I never dealt with it. I just kind of got rolling. I was like, you look, you know what? I really don't want to feel sorry for myself anymore. As somebody's got to do something, I'm going to do it. So just get out there and do it for yourself. Every day I went to work, I didn't know if I was going to come home and he would be alive. I would get numerous infections, cellulitis infections, and I had one that almost oh, killed shit. me. I had a bunch of stagnant fluid trapped in my leg. The fluid became infected and it went. In, the infection went into my bloodstream. Pretty lucky, never got infections like that. There was that one point where my kidneys shut down on me. But as far as staph or any kind of infection like that, I would get swelling in my leg. My legs would swell bigger than his was right there. But I didn't get infections like that. I was pretty lucky. If you could consider being 605 pounds lucky, I mean, I dodged a lot of bullets and I'm grateful for it. I don't know who did it for me, but shout out to you. And I went into septic shock and almost died. It's very tough to watch someone you love and your whole world just crumble in front of your eyes and not being able to do anything. When the nurse read the chart to me of what I weighed, I had this moment of shock. I was 600 pounds. I couldn't provide for myself or my family. I was a burden on them as well. My marriage was starting to fall apart and same with everything around me. You absolutely feel like a burden on everyone around you because there's nothing you can do. Or at least you feel that way. I, I, I don't want to say there's nothing you can do, but it's just there's a lot it's gonna take a lot of time for you to be any kind of help for anybody. And you, you're you like super down, you're like mad at yourself for letting it go this far. Oh God, it's just, it's such a bad place. And like instantly hearing him say that, it just teleports me back to that place where I was like, man, I really hated myself. And now I sit here and tell you guys I love me some me all the time. But there was a time where I guarantee I was depressed and I just trucked on and just pretended that nothing was wrong, but I know I was. That's when I knew I had to do something. I had a friend in real life. She started her own diet doing keto and I had seen great success with her. She gave me some YouTube links to watch, some research to read. From there on out, I just dove headfirst into it because I seen real life results on a real person. Keto is the only diet that ever worked for me. It's super beneficial to anyone I've ever seen try it. And it, you'll get sick at first if you do it, but it's like the weight just starts melting off you. But that's what it's designed to do. You don't have the carbs and all that turning the sugar in your body, so it just melts the fat. But it works great. If, if you are trying to diet, I highly recommend keto. So go-to meals look a lot like this. Veggies. They talk about superfoods. Eggs are superfoods. They're always a go-to. Now I That's have a lot of ranch, three, buddy. four times a week. Healthy protein, a lot more vegetables. <laughs> I've never not been a fan of vegetables, oh, but it was just something you would, you wouldn't have as your main side. Always turns out well. I was more of a mashed potato and rice guy. Veggies, I'd be like, get that rabbit food away from me. But yeah. I would do a salad once in a while, but it was like a taco salad, or it had like four chicken tenders stuffed in it with a pound of dressing. He put a lot of dressing in that, but I think dressing is still relatively low carb, so it's all right. Eat ranch, I know sour cream's low carb, so if you're doing like a taco salad and you want to put some sour cream in it, you're good to go. This is my Try home light gym. Sour cream, this though. bench and all the free weights you see, my cousin-in-law Clayton gave those to me. This is how it started for me. I'm thankful that he seen something in me to give me this stuff. As I'm glancing over at my prison gym like his, mine's just dumbbells and a resistance band and I just go with that every morning. Actually, I went at it too hard because I think I have an overtraining injury in my shoulder. 
but I don't do anything halfway. Obviously, I got to 605 pounds. I take everything to the extreme, so. Then I was talking about how I wanted to go to the gym. So we ended up going together a few times, just having someone there who knew the gym setting. It, it helped take away a lot of that anxiety walking into a place like that. To have such a good support system, it, it meant a lot because for so long, I always felt alone. Meanwhile, they were there and wanting to help me. I I've had a few people offer to go to the gym with me, like Planet Fitness, get a membership. It, I'm not really there yet, I don't think, in my journey, but I'm definitely getting closer. Like, I just want to get a little bit stronger, I don't know, before I go there and make a fool of myself or some woman films me in the background. It's like, this guy was staring at my ass. Like, yeah, maybe I was, but don't freaking put me on blast. I just had to smarten up and take their help. At my heaviest, I weighed 600 pounds. I lost 300 pounds in just over a year and a half. I dropped fast, 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 fast. And I never really hit a plateau till I hit the 300 pound mark. That's where I'm at. I'm at my first plateau right now, and this is the first time it stopped a little bit for me. I don't know, there's a medication I'm taking that makes me retain water, so I don't even know if I'm seriously plateaued yet. But I think I'm kind of stopped at 315 right now for about a week or two. No, it's been about two or three weeks now, not just a week or two. Then I hit one and it's now taken about four months to start losing weight again. Really? Not giving up is the only thing you can do. Oh shit, no, it better not take four months. I'm gonna go psycho if it takes more than a month and I'm gonna start like not eating. So don't let that happen to me, buddy. No, that's terrible. It's very disheartening though. For a plateau. You just have to push through it. My goal weight is 250 pounds. I'm still not finished. On my excess skin, some days I like it, some days I don't. I can see progress underneath when I flex. It's these on the sides that, that drive me the most crazy. <laughs> Looking back though. It's so crazy because for me, it's the love handles and I can friggin' make my love handle touch my nipple if I want. It is so gross. It's a big reminder of how far I've come. Battle scars of a warrior. Being 600 pounds, it was expected to happen. I know what I was and what I'd look like after I deflated, and perhaps one day I'll have surgery, but until then, it is what it is. Yeah. It's kind of how I like to look at it, as it's just like, hey, just proof of where I was and how far I've come. But talking to my surgeon, he was like, look, as far as the love handles, whatever goes, that's all plastic surgery. Like once you hit your goal weight, you'll see the plastic surgeons, they'll take care of that for you. And we'll get it all looking right. But till you get to that goal weight, there's really not much we could do, so. I was already the first time you came to Francis, I think. Yeah, I'm way smaller now. Yeah. Well, obviously you are too, but. Jennifer at her biggest was 320 pounds and she's lost about 122 pounds so far. Was she really 320? She looked a little bigger than 320. I don't know, maybe she's just shorter, maybe you're a short guy, but she's lost a lot of weight, so hats off to her. So, Jen and I would motivate each other during this by just being our biggest supporter, clapping when we lost a pound, clapping when we lost 10 pounds, researching recipes together, going for walks together. It's been a complete lifestyle change for us. This is just our life now. We're both healthier and happier. Come here. I don't think you guys realize how much you take for granted just getting out and going for a walk on like a nice day and just how much you can look forward to that when you start losing enough weight to get mobile again. If you are somebody who reached 600 pounds, I know there's not very many of us out there, but some of you, there's a lot to look forward to once you get back down. And I know I usually make videos where I joke and laugh around a lot. This is a little more serious, but yeah, there's just a lot to look forward to. So don't count yourself out. <laughs> And doing it together, I think, is why he's been so successful and why I've been successful. Yeah. My oh, Instagram, I started it just for an accountability page for myself. It took off quite a bit. Now, it basically still is a way for me to keep track of this journey, of my progress. But it's also out there to inspire others and let them see that a normal, regular, everyday Joe can transform their lives for the better. I do. Isn't it crazy that I kind of just started this YouTube channel for the same reason, because I didn't want somebody seeing me fail 
And granted that I'm not quite where I need to be yet, but it feels good to, you know, have some people support you and root you on, even if you just start doing reaction videos and you're not doing, you know, quite the same thing you started out to do initially. It feels good, man. You get some support from people. It pumps you up a little bit. It makes you feel good. You get a lot of uh, direct messages saying how much I've inspired someone to change. It means a lot to me knowing that I've helped someone because I was that guy looking for an answer. And just knowing that you've helped someone turn their life around for the better, that's just a good feeling. Mentally now, I'm a lot more focused on my goals, focused on my future and focused. Yeah, I'm looking forward to my future. Now people tell me that I've inspired them or I'm helping them, which I think is friggin' awesome. I really don't think of myself as all that inspirational. I'm just a guy who's just trying to reach his goals. And if it helps you along the way, that makes me happy. Like, I, I like being able to help somebody else. I'm more of a giver than a receiver. I never ask for much, but. It's on my life. When things come up that stress me out, instead of turning to food or anything else, I face them head on. It's been a journey. Definitely some ups and downs, but I'm just super proud of Chance and how far he's come and, and how he's changed. I guess I'm just excited to see where the, the future takes him and, and myself and just excited to keep going and get on to phase two. I don't... You know, it took me until I hit about like probably like 350 before I looked in the mirror and I was like, huh, I actually am losing some weight. Like it just forever. You look in the mirror and you see the same guy looking back at you and then one day you look at maybe the first video you post or you look at your driver's license. There's a picture of me and my driver's license on my Instagram, which you guys should follow me on there. Sean of Steel with the underscores. But there's some like kind of before after or pictures of me wearing like my old clothes on my Instagram. You haven't really seen much of that on here, but. Take a lot for granted anymore or I try not to. I'm thankful for the things I have. I'm thankful for this second chance that I've been given. I told you, it's kind of crazy just how much your experience can mirror somebody else's. Just because you both got up to that weight, you both were probably in a dark place. At least, I actually, I know I was in a dark place. I'm usually a happy-go-lucky guy, so you guys don't see very much of this side of me. I joke around a lot. And some people take that like, I'm, I'm so cocky, I'm so this. No, I just... I've been to a bad place before, so I try to keep things light. I don't take life too seriously. Um, you'll never get out alive. So that's just how I like to look at things. And I like to have a laugh. I like to joke around. Some people think I'm kind of a jerk. Maybe. Sometimes I am. But I'm happy with the progress I've made, and I've still got a lot more to go. So hopefully this guy inspired you because he definitely inspired me because he's talking about fighting through a plateau while i'm currently in a plateau but yeah i really like this guy and uh, i'm very happy for him and his wife so like comment subscribe i'll see y'all later peace